where Erica Stefanko, who was convicted of murder and the death of her then husband's ex-girlfriend, could be getting a new trial. Earlier this week, the Ohio Court of Appeals found that the judge had made a trial error when he allowed Stefanko's ex-husband, Chad Cobb, to testify against her remotely because of the pandemic. Cobb's ex-girlfriend, Ashley Biggs, was a pizza delivery driver who was strangulated to death while she was out on her last delivery of that night. Well, he pleaded guilty to her murder, testified against Stefanko in 2020. Court TV cameras were in the courtroom for every moment of his testimony. And this is what Cobb had to say about Biggs' death after he was arrested in 2012 and Stefanko was allowed to leave the police station. What did you believe would happen to Erica if you cooperated with the state? Once again, Your Honor, objection. I don't, I don't Overall. know. Hold on, hold on, Mr. Cobb. Go ahead. Overall. All right, go ahead. Judge said you can answer. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry? You can answer. The judge, there was an objection and the judge overruled it. You can answer. Do you want me to ask it I again? Uh, I don't know what would happen to Erica. I just, I don't know how she walked out of the police station. I don't know how she was objection. allowed to, to oh, so I, I, don't, hold I, I don't know. Overruled. Go ahead. All right, Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Cobb. Could you repeat your answer? If I would have cooperated with the state and gave them the information that they sought, I don't know what would happen, Erica, because I can't understand why she was able to walk out of the police station the same day that we both were put in there. I mean, I got hauled off to jail and she walked right back into the home of everybody and everything that I love. So I can't explain that. I can't explain what would happen to her later. I can't figure out how this all went sideways in the first place. All right, so with us, criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor, Nicole DeBoard in Houston, and here in studio, criminal defense attorney, Rachel Kaufman. Rachel, so that's your hometown, Akron, Ohio. Um, you say you, you think Chad shouldn't have been allowed to testify remotely like that. I think that the judge made, the trial judge made a very um, impulsive decision to, to allow this guy, Mr. Cobb, to testify not only remotely, but with a mask on and with the camera so far from his face. You know, the defendant, for better or worse, has a right to a fair trial, which includes, a, you know, thorough and thorough cross-examination, and that cross-examination cross should get out, you know, some issues about his credibility, meaning if, if we're looking at Mr. Cobb's credibility, and as a defense attorney, I want the jury to be able to actually see his facial expressions. I want them to actually see how he's acting when he sees the defendant. I want them to see it all, and there's, I mean, I wouldn't know I couldn't do a lineup and mm. pick this guy out because I wouldn't know what he even really looks like. Yeah, I mean, can't even see his face. Right? Yeah, it's, it is hard to see his face. They um, should have waited. Bottom line is, they should have waited mm. to have a trial until they could have had a fair trial. Because now we're just like wasting more tax dollars retrying a case that could have just been tried once. Mm. Yeah, fair. That's a fair point. Uh, I'd like to play for our viewers more of Chad Cobb's testimony against Erica Stefanko. What did you do with? Ashley's body. When I had to leave, I picked her up and put her in the car. Whose car? Ashley's car. What part of the car did you put her in? In the back seat. And when you put her in the back seat, did she have anything on her that, that was placed on her that she didn't have on her when she arrived? Yes, there was. What was on her? A zip tie. How many? I only remember one. I remember one around her neck. Um, Nicole, I want to uh, pull you back into this conversation because, I mean, it's interesting. Remember, first he pleaded guilty and then he changed his story after he and Erica Stefanko got divorced. Um, from what you just heard, um, what, what can we expect in, in, in a new trial? I think that you're going to hear vigorous cross-examination based on this previous testimony. So even though all of it gets tossed out, 
all of the time and taxpayer dollars were wasted because this case was forced to proceed without the protections that our constitution guarantees. Um, and now there's a record of every single word that he said. So the lawyers can go through and pick apart every sentence that this particular witness testified to. Um, and you can expect that they will get into the motivation and the timing uh, for him to suddenly remember these details mm. and what he told the police in comparison. Yeah, it is interesting. Okay, um, Erica Stefanko actually addressed the court at her sentencing. Let's listen. Your Honor, if it is healing and helpful to Ashley's family and friends, Think of me as the monster. If it is helpful for Cindy Cobb to exonerate her child for his own actions by putting the blame on me, if that helps these people, particularly people who are victims, I can accept that. I was most certainly my worst self during my relationship with Chad. I have never been a hateful person. I would never have wanted what happened to Ashley Biggs, regardless of what statements people think that they heard on that tape. And all I can do at this point for her family and friends is to Pray for God's peace and comfort for them. However, they need to get it. For my own self, I would ask the court for leniency. I would like to be back with my family someday. I love my children more than life. And my husband does not deserve to go through the rest of his life alone without a partner. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, Rachel, so we were just watching um, you know, her statement at sentencing. She appears very emotional, very sympathetic. What are the implications there? I mean, in a new trial, perhaps? So the fact that her defense attorney allowed her to just sort of, without any sort, any, you know, script, just speak to the court openly and seemingly honestly, I would probably put her on the stand the second time. I don't, I don't know. She, she seems to be quite believable. The only thing that I didn't like that she said at the end was about how her husband shouldn't have to be alone the rest of his life. No mm. offense, nobody cares. Like, <laughs> I, like I never mean to be rude, but like that's not what this is about. But the fact she did seem to be incredibly reflective and emotional and could maybe make a good witness on the stand for herself, given that when she didn't testify last time, she was convicted. Yeah. So she has the benefit of now looking back at what they did at the last trial, possibly make some changes. Yeah, yeah, what do you, what do you think, Nicole? Agree. Um, you know, she had a lot to say that really didn't uh, implicate her in any way. She was reflective and thoughtful and compelling, um, and I, I think that she made a good witness. So I would probably put her on the stand. I think this next trial is going to be far more challenging for the state than the first one because of the record. Nicole, I just have to say, I think your dog misses you in the next room. <laughs> So sorry. <laughs> I think it's cute. I think a lot of our viewers actually enjoyed it. <laughs> hey, thank you so much, Nicole DeBard and Rachel Kaufman.